Welcome to the J Train Podcast. That's right. Every Tuesday and Friday with your emails, your stories, your questions. It's Friday, baby. Ring that bell. And maybe you're sitting there wondering what the new year will bring. You've stopped drinking for the month. You're training. It feels like it's the final countdown to life. And that's why we're here every Tuesday and Friday. The J Train Podcast, Feather Nation Studios, coming to you live from the new Feather Nation Studios in Koreatown, New York City, every Tuesday and Friday. That's right, we have uh, this, this podcast, it's about evolution, it's about growing, it's about change, discomfort. That's right, that's, and, and listen, Anything hard, anything that's good, anything that tastes so sweet takes a little squeeze. It's going to feel different. It's going to be new. And that's what brings us here to Koreatown. Okay? I to say it, it was kind of cool. It's cool, man. We are in a brand new studio. We have new video. We have uh, Shelby still here on the ones and twos. Still present. Still present. And... We have, it's going to be, the reason we moved is because it's an opportunity. And yes, I did have to leave my apartment an hour earlier than I would have had to if I had just rolled out of bed. You're in my boat now. That's right. Mm -hmm. Shelby and I are hoofing it. I love, I love that with phrase. The, with the, the hoofing it? Yeah. I like I hoofing mean, it. People yeah. should say that. Well, I'm, listen, J Train Podcast is bringing it back. We're hoofing it. We're, we're with the strap hangers. Riding those rails, getting on the subway, coming down here because what? And and we're here at Virtual Comedy Networks, and that's Plug City for them. If you're looking at it, that's right. <clears throat> I don't know how the audience found us. A line out the door here at the new uh, studio here at the new Heather Nation Studios at Virtual Comedy Network. Um, and if you're looking to start a podcast, like you know. It, I don't, you know, when people are like, how do I start a podcast? What should I do? I'm like, hey, I've given you all the tools. Mm -hmm. I've written to places that didn't have their addresses online. I've DM'd. And we're going to get, uh, uh, that's a little, little pl that's a little preview of what we're going to get into in the first five minutes of this show. DM. Don't mind if I do. Don't mind if I do. Um, listen. You're looking to start a podcast, you have one, you're looking for a network, you know, Virtual Comedy Network might be an answer for you, I don't know. But, we are here. It's an opportunity to have guests not have to hoof it mm -hmm. to Harlem. Mm -hmm. um, it's an opportunity to be centralized in New York City to to get people to come and, and feel like they're walking into a legitimate operation and it's not me serving coffee. And Also, we had some issues at the last studio. Mm -hmm. uh, Shelby, you know, was using the gym at the building and trying to get all pumped up. I thought it was fine. I, it's like, I'm not making a mess. Listen, new year, new you. Yeah. I know you're trying to jack up, trying to swallow out. Um, the building didn't appreciate it. So. Hey, sorry, folks. We had words and, uh, now we're here. But here's the other opportunity that the new Feather Nation Studios offers us. We have video. We got James here. Working the film. He's getting us ready. And, and the, the opportunity in video is to take funny chunks of these episodes and put them on my Instagram and you, the listener, get you to tag a friend. Finding new and creative ways for you to share. Because listen, I get it. The blowback is that I don't listen to podcasts and I don't, you know, you have to let it just like I gave you the name of virtual comedy network and you can go find it on your own. You have to let people feel like they found it on their own. Mm -hmm. So when you tag a bitch in the comments of a funny video from an episode that you enjoyed, that is their way to go little, take a little taste. Hmm. I like this general Sal's chicken. 
Maybe I'll go and enjoy the Fortune Panda at the mall food court. Mm-hmm. That's a good example. So consider these Instagram videos where we're going to put funny stuff. I'm face to camera right now. I'm looking at you right now. I'm looking right into your eyes. And that's right. That's when you ta- let, let, put on some music. Let me get. I'm looking right at you. And I want you to take those beautiful little fingers of yours. And I want you to hit that at button. And I want you to comment on my Instagram posts at that friend from college who likes funny dog videos at that guy you used to date that you guys had a funny conversation about farting and I've given you the opportunity to take that video and share it with a friend, share it with a coworker. I'm looking right at you. Tickle the twine of my comments. Do it. Feather my nuts. And that's how it works. I'm looking at you, Mr. Listener. I'm looking at you, Mrs. Listener. I'm looking at you, Ms. Listener. Johnny Listens. Lisa Listens. That's right. So we're going to create new and, and creative ways for you to share the podcast over my Instagram with the videos. And here's another thing we're doing. And I'm not sure what episode this is going to come up, but it's coming soon. Call-ins. That's right. Uh, we want to take your calls. I want to take your calls. Uh, we want to see. I want to hear from you, the listener. I want to hear your voice. I want to be able to talk it out with you and mute you if you talk too much. So hit this, that dump button. Hit that dump button. Shelby, with his professional background mm-hmm. in the radio world, we're 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 moving more to as we evolve and become new. We look back to the old to really make this a full, full-fledged full show. You can't. You got to learn from your past elders. That's right. Learn from your elders. Look towards the future. Correct. That's what we do here on the J Train Podcast every Tuesday and Friday. So I'm here with Classic Shelf. It is a, I don't know if you know it yet, it's a Turn Down the Lights episode. Just, just your boys, J Train and Classic Shelf. Turn down the lights. That's right. Harry, the piano player, is here. We put him. We brought him into the studio, and we're gonna go through a lot of emails, and that's what we do on these types of episodes. Next episode Tuesday, you'll get a guest, but we wanted to open the studio together. Yeah, you know, just ju- just, just us getting those sheets. That's right, bust them in. So we want to get in those sheets and bust them in. Yeah, we want to really work this studio in with an alone cast a Shelby and J train turn down the lights before we get uh, you can send in your emails J train podcast at gmail.com J train podcast at gmail.com before we get to the emails I got a DM on the way up to the studio that I want to go over okay lots of women ask questions of this podcast where it's like how I want to sli- slide into the DMs mm-hmm. and I'm not saying I, I would say this is for anyone this because I, I think when we the DMs are such a dark and and singular place. It's a lonely place. You don't know what might go down there. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know what I'm doing. So there's no protocol. There's no shame there. So everyone's just going. But if you want to, I, I got a DM from someone who doesn't follow me. Okay, that is an insult in itself. But. They don't follow me, so I'm giving you the the background. I get this email, this DM, as I'm coming up the elevator. I'm going to read it to you right now. Okay, Shelby, you ready? Lay it on me. And and this is the wrong way to DM someone, is how I'm going to start off. Okay? And I get what she's doing. It doesn't come from a bad place. This isn't a bad person. But she is going about it in a way she thinks is correct that I will tell you is exactly wrong. Here's the DMs. I think you should go on a date with my cousin. Assuming that you're not a serial killer, 
Jewish. She's trying to marry within the tribe of an appropriate age. How old are you? Single, LOL. Actually funny in person. Can't be one of those people who was only funny when he's sitting behind a computer screen. Appropriately close with your parents. No mommy issues. That's the opening. That's what gets me. That's supposed to get me all excited to go on a date with her cousin. What an opportunity. Oh, you mean I You mean I get to go prove I'm funny to your cousin who I don't even know what she fucking looks like or if I'm even attracted? And I'm saying this, attraction is subjective. So don't look at me like, oh, well, you'll only go out. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. I'm the... Uh, Listen, this podcast, the mantra is everyone is someone's foot. There's people out there masturbating to feet. So attraction is different for everybody. So what you're, but you're, what you're saying is, and you're not even the person I, so I went to her account. Hers is locked up. I can't even, but I'm I'm saying this. I have a girlfriend. First of all, Mm -hmm. I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, I have a girlfriend, which I wrote her. I go, I appreciate your message, but I have a girlfriend. What is this bullshit about? I know, I know. I wrote her, I have a girlfriend. I appreciate your message. You should go listen to the J Train and You Up podcast. That's what I wrote back. Plug City. But if I'm going to give advice to the women and men out there that are heading into the DM waters, this is not the way to swim. It's inappropriate. It also puts her cousin at a level that doesn't, She's basically, when you say actually funny in person, can't be one of those people who's only funny when he's sitting behind a computer screen. That turns her into the, you know, her cousin into, oh, am I going out with fucking, you know, uh, uh, Julia Louise Dreyfus? Is that who you're setting me up with? Yeah. Like, who are you? Are you the, are you the, and how funny do I have to be? What's funny to you? You've seen, and the thing is, if you were to go to someone, you've seen their account. You're knocking at that door. Come a prepared knocker. So, hey, if she came to my account and gone, hey, your account is so funny. Lead with compliments. You're the one knocking. Hey, I really, I just went through your account. It's so funny. I really do believe that your co- my cousin and you would be a great match. Here's a picture. Here's six pictures of her. Here's, if you if it's, if it's a no, no problem, no need to answer, uh, if it's a if it's a yes, here's her number so you can send her a text, or here's her account so you can send a DM. That's the appropriate way. Now you've given me all the tools, and I'm saying me. Don't just be like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm talking directly to my girlfriend. Don't don't be offended. I'm just saying for anyone out there, like I would understand that if a guy got this, a guy like me, which most guys are, are they go, fuck this person. Yeah. Well, what Wait. they would do is first they would find a picture. But, like, that's the other thing. If a guy got this, he would go, he would immediately sound like a dick. He would immediately sound like a guy and sound disgusting if you went, let's see what she looks like. You know, like, at that point, you put the guy in a position to only be a dick. Can you believe, can you believe he was like, let me see what she looks like? I told him that she's Jewish and you better be funny. It's like. Fuck off. J Train, what's that? I remember that it's like there's an episode of Scrubs where he yeah. gets like set up on a blind date and somebody like walks in and it's like somebody ugly and he's like, oh, come on. And then, but like the hot girl was behind. Oh. It's kind of like that. Like, oh, you're like, come on, I got to see the goods here. Well, we, you know what? And, you know, this is a 1952. Mm-hmm. Also, in 1952, you wouldn't be able to set me up with your cousin. You wouldn't even know that I'm someone. That you think is kind of funny. Because the only reason she's approaching, even though she doesn't follow, is that she thinks I'm somewhat funny. Which I, I appreciate. That's, that's, but, and then she comes over the top with this, I don't think you're funny. I don't, like, answer these questions before I'll set you up with my cousin. You came to my house. Don't come to my house and demand, you know, <laughs> make demands. And she's saying, like, that... He needs to hit her husband needs to be a member of the tribe. So she's always like she's already like bring a marriage into this. Yeah, we're already at marriage. Oh, why don't you let a date happen? Why don't you, you, as if the only way it's successful is if you two end up together. That's the problem. Women do this themselves all the time. 
She's only looking to marry Jewish. Okay, well, why don't we see if it's a good date? Maybe we learn something from each other and move on to better lives, to a better match. And I say we, the royal we. This could be any guy. Thought that was interesting. J Train Podcast at gmail.com. J Train Podcast at gmail.com. Let's get through some emails. You ready? Let's do it. Before we get started, we are sponsored people. Fab Fit Fun, Fab Fit Fun. Woo! 2019 Fab Fit Fun winter box is on sale now. So listen, I will say this, okay? I think Fab Fit Fun is a, an incredible solution to a problem none of us want to admit we have. The problem we have is we're not nice to ourselves. We don't think we deserve anything. We don't want to spend any money on ourselves. We want nice things. That's a problem. Okay, how do you get the fitness and lifestyle and beauty products full size, full size, full size? How do you get those products while also not feeling badly for the money you spend on yourself? How do you do that? Fat Fit Fun's the answer because they're going to send you a box that's worth over two hundred dollars. Every box is over has a value of over two hundred dollars, and you're going to get it for forty nine ninety nine. And then you're going to get the box and you're going to go through it and you're going to like some things. You're going to hate some things. Let me give you a perfect example. I told you, every time I get the Fat Fit Fun box, I give it, I, 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 I slide it to my girlfriend. I slide it to Jess. And I push it over to her with a stick. Like, like I'm feeding. Don't get too close. Yeah, no, 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 no. You don't, you'll lose a hand in there. Mm-hmm. So I nudge it towards her like she's a bear at the zoo. And I like it, like I'm nudging honey to the bear at the zoo. And I nudge, 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 and then she she takes it, she she hugs it, she looks both ways, like like a like a like it's a trick, and then she scurries off to the bathroom. Okay? And then all you hear is grunts and tearing and opening, and that's all you hear. You're you know, you you're it's an animal. She's an animal. And then she comes out and it'll be like one thing or two things. And she go, I love this. <laughs> like fall, has fallen in love. This is a perfect example. She said she came out of the bathroom this last time after I gave her the winter box. Okay. That's a good name for a vagina. That's not been shaved too. This is my winter box. That's funny. Mm-hmm. Right. That's good. Funny. Okay. Yeah. So I, she comes out with this cloth and I guess it's called the makeup eraser. And she said to me, she literally said to me, she goes, I looked at this cloth and I was like, fuck this. Like what, what is, this is stupid. Who need, how good could this be? And then she goes, you won't believe I did one swipe of the eye, all the makeup gone. That's big. That's huge. And she said, it's usually like a 10 minute process. And she said, this magic eraser cloth should be in every wedding gift bag. Like, Jess was immediately obsessed with one product has changed her life from one box. That's what these boxes can do for you. So fab fit fun is a seasonal subscription box with full size beauty, fitness, fashion, and lifestyle products retails for 49 99, but always has a value of over $200. Use coupon code J train, J train, J train. That's J train for $10 off your first box at fabfitfun.com, fabfitfun.com, fabfitfun.com. That's $10 off the already incredibly low price of 49 99. So you're going to get, your first box for thirty nine ninety nine that has a value of over two hundred dollars. That is what they call arbitrage, baby. That's not what they. That's not arbitrage, but it's a. I, I think it's a version of it. It is I, now. It is now. That's right. Fabfitfun.com, promo code J Train J Train J Train. Very excited to have them as a sponsor. Let's do the emails. Ready. Friends, not fuck buddies. I'll get right to it. In college, I slept with men. I didn't try to befriend them. No complaints. I had a great time, but now that I've graduated and moved to a new city, I'm working on building a new network of friends, both men and women. However, it seems like when I make what I think is a new friend, he's usually interested in sleeping with me. Oh, surprise, surprise. (laughs) Yeah. Wait a minute. A man who likes women wants to sleep with a girl who's giving him attention? Say what? When this happens, I usually don't. I usually <laughs> yeah, call the police. I usually end up trying to casually joke the situation away or just ghosting the dude. I'm seriously trying to put out, uh, put 
uh, appropriate boundaries in these friendships, and I don't want to lead anybody on. Is this my fault that this keeps happening? What can I do from the beginning? I just want to be friends. P.S. I would love a celeb lookalike. She's very beautiful. I can see why. I mean, uh, Shelby, I know, I know who I would give as the celeb lookalike. Shelby is now assessing the situation. I can. I know exactly who to. Who are you saying? Thinking. What is it? Willow Smith. Oh, really? Will Smith, child. See, I think she looks like a young Brandy. I can see that's like, but, this is your version of Lucy Liu. This, she has <laughs> braids. <laughs> I mean, Brandy's a comedy. I mean, she has a beautiful face. So, <laughs> my version of Lucy Liu. So, what would, Shelby, do you have any thoughts on this? I, I, she's making, she's looking to network and these guys are trying to fuck her. I mean... This is kind of like, you know, if we want to get into a serious topic, this is like the, 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 we're towing the line of talking about Me Too at this um, point. Yeah, I mean, you, you've heard it even, even if it wasn't like the, you know, we don't get into serious, but people, you'd tell stories like, hey, come out to, okay, this is a business lunch. We'll talk about your career. And then it's uh, halfway through, like, oh, this guy just wants to. Fuck yeah. I, I think the, for her, the way, I think you have to, um, to protect yourself. I think you can only, you know, there's a, listen, I can't give you advice that will, that will protect you from the horrors of the world. That's not my responsibility. That's not what I can do. And also all I can do is acknowledge that something like that could happen. This is not what I'm not, I'm saying what Shelby just presented is very likely you meet someone in a professional sense. They're like, let's go get drinks. Let's talk about business. And then five minutes in, you realize it's not about business. I can, that, that is not even like a crazy scenario. What I will say to her. I'd say a lot of people listening probably have had the same experience. Totally. I Listen, that happens. One thing I'll read in her email. Um, she's crossed the worlds already, though. She's saying, I'll get right to it. In college, I slept with a lot of men. I didn't try to befriend them. No complaints. I had a great time. But now that I've graduated, moved to a new city, I'm working on building a network of friends, both men and women. Those are two different types of meetings. In college, you slept with men that you met at bars, <laughs> that you met uh, maybe in class, because that wasn't a professional workplace. You have to consider the environment of how you meet these people. If you're going on dating apps and saying, Okay, I'm open to any type of thing. No, 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 no. Everyone's on the dating app to date or to fuck or to for interpersonal relationships that involve penis and vagina. Yeah, this isn't was bum the same bumble business. No, if you're on bumble business, that's a different thing. Yeah. So um that but that's all to say consider the environment. If you met on the street, that guy wants to fuck. If you met in the office, that guy might want to fuck. Because he's an animal, but also you met in an office and you can always say to him, hey, I've come here on no, the, the, on these terms. I, I came to you on office terms. Does that make sense? Yeah. Do I sound like a horrible person? I'm, 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 I know I'm talking about things that are very sensitive to people because it's like, well, men can't be friends with women. I'm not saying that. I have so many female friends. I've, I've you know... And especially in comedy, you're meeting at a comedy club where I can understand, like, that, like, people go, well, that's, like, a very friendly, but that's a work environment. If I met a woman that was nice to me at a comedy club I would, uh, who was also a comic, I would go, she's being professionally courteous. That means nothing as far as us being, you know, her being attracted to me. She's yeah. being nice to me because we work in the same environment. So I'm saying to this woman, I'm not saying it can't happen. I'm not saying it won't happen. But when you're meeting these people, the environment is important. If you're meeting them at a bar and then you say, I want to talk business, you have to re re reestablish, hey, this is for business. Or, he yeah, heading in, just really laid out. Hammer and home. Yeah. But if you meet in the office and they go, hey, I want to talk about your career, you, you go with it. And, you, and then if things go the wrong way, you go, hey, I, I'm getting a sense that this isn't about my career. And I know these seem easy when I talk about it, and I, I don't mean to, like, lessen it, but... I think consider the environment. If you're meeting people at bars and then getting surprised that they don't want to be your friend, you have to reassess why people go to bars. Why are they there? Podcast at gmail.com. Podcast at gmail.com. Help, please. Uh-oh. 
I have a feeling this is going to be tough to read. I wish you all the best. It sounds like it's written from a Nigerian prince. Congratulations on all proyectos. Let's let's keep the emails to English. I, I don't mean to like, like, I don't need the Spanglish email. The proyectos, I don't need to like translate while I'm doing I wish you all the best. I'm coming to you for advice on two things. A year ago, I took a course to become a PT. On the second day, I was paired up with one of the hottest guys I've seen in at least 10 years younger. I'm 38. He must be 27, 28. We didn't become friends nor close because I'm socially awkward and shy. And every time I saw him after that, all I could say was hi and run. But I think I caught him looking at me a couple of times. I wanted to ask him out, but chicken out and uh, said I'd do it when the course is over in case it wasn't what I thought it was. But of course, I never did. Well, yesterday I run at him while walking my dog. See, this is the difference of environments. Back to the last email. You Last email, if you're meeting in a bar, they're there to fuck. These people met in their PT class. She's being appropriately cautious. Probably more cautious than a man would be, which is sad. But yeah. I, you know. Well, yesterday I ran him while walking my dog, just pure luck because he lives in an entirely different part of the city. He said, hello, made eye contact, carry on, uh, and carry on. I, once again, froze, said only hi back. The thing is, I'm moving back home to a different country in a, in a couple of months. So I got nothing to lose, and seeing him again made me ju- made just want to do it. So how do I approach this? Obviously, to get to his IG, I had to stalk him. So does that put me in a disadvantage? Should I acknowledge like, that I like him in the first text? Should I ask him out right there? Do I tap on his wall, like some photos, maybe say hello? And if, and if, and if I straight up ask him out and he, if he agrees to date, since I'm leaving soon, do I go, uh, go full speed on his ass? <laughs> do I disclose that I'm leaving? That's why I asked him out. I'm prepared for a no, maybe not even a reply, but I'm not ready for a yes. But I'm not ready for a yes. Thanks in advance. I, if you get to read this, keep up the good work you're doing. Um, from Argentina. P.S. English isn't my first language, so I'm s- sorry if I wrote something wrong. No, you, your email was actually perfect. Um, Shelby, any thoughts? So she's still in the physical therapy? PT class? No, she's done with the PT class. She sees the guy walking his dog. She's moving back to her home country in two months. She wants to ask about. Do you have any thoughts? I get. Do you think guys would not care as much about the whole like, oh, I stalked? No, IG, we don't care. You know? yeah. No, we don't care. Um, also, guys love an end date. Um, guys don't like being the reason you'll maybe not push off your end date. <laughs> so those are two things. We love an end date, but we don't want us changing the end date. So here's the the hard truth. I would message him. Hey, it was great seeing you. I ha- And then admit that it's a little weird that you found his account. So, hey, it was great seeing you. Um, I had to come find you on Instagram. I know this is weird. Yeah. Like, I would say something, like, acknowledge that, hey, um, I had to come. I, I, It took me 10 years to find you. Like, make fun of it. Acknowledge the awkward. Acknowledge the awkward. So, hey, great seeing you. I know this is weird uh, getting a random DM, but I had to find you and tell you that I think you're really cute and I'd love to get drinks sometimes. Sometime. And then he says a yes or a no or a maybe. You already got the dogs. You got the dogs. Hey, you know, you have that in common. He, Let's say he says yes. You go on the date and then you talk. May, the thing is, I understand what she's saying. She's like, I just want to get it all set up. This isn't a flight you're taking. You don't have to send your passport info. You don't have to get everything set. You should give yourself, and, and, and a lot of women will write me and they'll go, should I tell them I like them already and just let them know that, and tell them that I'm looking for casual, but I'll sleep with them on the first day? And it's like, no, 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 no. Stop that shit. Give yourself the opportunity to opt out of this. Not for him. You might go meet him on a drink and go, eh, I don't really feel it. At that point, you can go, nice to meet you. Got to go. You don't have to tell them that you're leaving the country in two months. That's your little secret. That's your little secret. That's for you. But let's say you go on the date. You have a good time. It comes up naturally. Um, you guys end up like making on a street corner. You go, but you know, you go into your, your Argentinian tale of, 
Oh, nosotros. You know, like our... <laughs> Dios míos. Una película. Like, I don't know. Like, you go into like... You know, it becomes romantic. Maybe that happens. That's yeah, great. I'm going back to Buenos... I'm not going back to Buenos Aires quite yeah, soon. Maybe, yeah. But Or it's... Hey, I just have to let you know, like... But I would think that if a date's going well, it would come up. Where are you from? What do you do? Uh, how long are you staying here? Those are things that should come up on a date if it happens. Yeah. So to get in front of it, to be like, hey, I like you and I'm leaving in two months. That's basically what you're doing. Please, please. It's You know what it's like? Because guys want that information to know. Like basically you're pouring blood on yourself while walking into the shark tank. <laughs> You're walking in being like, <laughs> here's how many months I have. Here's the excuse you could make when we break up. You know, why don't you just walk in and see what happens and 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 own the information as, a, you know, that you have. I'm not saying to play games, but be good at the game of life. Don't walk into the day being like, hey, I like you and you're in control of this whole situation. Like, give yourself some control. Yeah. The minute you give away all that that information before you've even met and given yourself the luxury of knowing whether you like them in person, then you've given up all control of this relationship. You have the upper hand here. Podcast at gmail.com. Podcast at gmail.com. Oh, we're sponsored. <clears throat> I lo- New sponsor, I think. I don't know if they've been here before. This episode of the J Train is sponsored by Blue Chew. Blue Chew. Blue Chew. Guys, remember the days... When you were always ready to go, now you can increase your performance and get that extra confidence in bed. Listen up, bluechew.com. That's blue chew. That's blue like the color blue. Blue chew brings you the first chewable with the same FDA approved active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. Ooh. But how doesn't get any better than that? You can take them anytime, day or night, even on a full stomach. And since they're chewable, they work up to twice as fast as a pill. So you can be ready whenever an opportunity arises. If you could benefit from more confidence where it counts, Blue Chew is the fast and easy way to enhance your performance. Blue Chew is prescribed online by licensed physicians. So if you don't have to, you don't have to go to the doctor's office or wait in line at the pharmacy. And it ships right to your door in a discreet package. Listen. I'm not saying you're out there with an issue, Mm -hmm. but if you are, or you're wondering, Blue Chew's a great option. And listen, not every day is a good day for, you know, little J train downstairs. No. Sometimes, you you know. But on, you know, some days you might be going out with uh, somebody from Argentina. You never know. You know. With two months. Come on. With a time ticket. Keep one, keep one on, yes. Blue Chew is prescribed online. They make, they're make they made in the U.S. And since Blue Chew prepares and ships directly, they're cheaper than a pharmacy. And best of all, there's no more awkwardness. That's right. Make the mailman work for you. No more waiting in line at the pharmacy for your for your Viagra. I mean, Don, you don't even have to talk to the doc. Right now, we've got a special offer for our listeners. Visit BlueChew.com. That's BlueChew.com. Get your first... Fr- First shipment free when you use promo code JTRAIN, JTRAIN, JTRAIN. Just pay $5 of shipping. Wow. Get your first shipment free when you use promo code JTRAIN. You just pay the 5 bucks for shipping. That's great. I mean, they probably have skipped the 15 seconds to get past this because the minute you started it, they already went and bought it. Yeah, that's right. You know? You're right. Again, B-L-U-E-Chew.com, promo code JTRAIN, to try it for free. Blue Chew is the better, cheaper, faster choice, and we thank them for sponsoring the podcast. B-L-U-E-Chew.com, BlueChew.com, promo code JTRAIN, promo code JTRAIN, promo code JTRAIN. Geographically desirable. I'll get down to it. I met a guy in Vegas in 2018. I was reasonably single and ready to mingle. My friend and I decided to make friends with a bachelor party at a nightclub. I hit it off with one of the guys. We talked and danced all night, even made out a little bit. I got his number, but we didn't end up meeting up the rest of the trip. We follow each other on Instagram and Snapchat and have kept in touch the past two years. We didn't live close to each other and never planned on meeting up, though. However, I made a big move in November and now live within two hours of him. That's huge. I honestly never saw him as an option until I received a text from him last week. He's going to be in my city in March and some friends and uh, with some friends and asked if he could take me out to dinner. Where the hell did this come from? I went back through my Instagram posts from the last two years and he's liked every single one of them. All right. 
And am I just a tree? Am I just geographically desirable? Does he just want to fuck on his guys weekend? What gives? We've been texting nonstop since he asked me out last week. Should I go on this date? Thanks again for your help. What do you think? I mean, it's, it's uh, looks like it's it's not a bad thing, but it definitely looked like he's trying to get something on his guys weekend. Yeah, you know, I think we have to admit to the con. You know. <clears throat> She's connected to things that don't connect to me. She goes, now I'm two hours away. And then he texted that he's going to be in my city and wants to take me on a date. You being two hours away is independent of him wanting to go on a date because he's going to be in your city. Your city could have been eight hours away. Your city could have been a three-day journey away. He would still be texting you to take you out because he'll be in your city convenience versus effort and convenience of effort. We have to look at that. So because a lot of people are in that position where they're going, well, he keeps doing this. I, I, it, it's interesting. It's, I, I came up with a term today. Winter Bush. We heard it earlier. Winter Bush. Yeah. <laughs> two terms. I came up with two terms. Winter Bush for when a woman doesn't shave or a guy doesn't shave over the winter. I'm calling this genieing, okay? Genieing. And what it means is, put it on the screen. Can we write it on the screen, James? Genieing is when you, a lot of people are saying, I want to go on a date, okay? And then the guy will come back and go, I'll take you on a date. When I'm, I'm going to, it just so happens I'm in your city. I'll take you on a date. And that is kind of a lesser version of the thing you asked for. It's not, I want to go on a date and he goes, let's make a plan two weeks out. I got Delta points. I'll make the flight. I'll plan a thing. No, 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 no. You said, I go. I want to go on a date. And then he goes, just so happens I'm going to be there. I'll take a couple hours away from my guide trip. And, cause, and why I call it genie. You know, then like, um, like whenever there's a, the, the genie will grant your wish. You'll be like, I want... Your wish would be like, I want a be- I want a uh, a delicious meal. Genie, my first wish is a delicious meal. And then the genie goes, your wish is my command. And then he, poof, there's dog food, high-end dog food. And then you go, well, I asked for a delicious meal. And the genie goes, yeah, that's the most delicious dog food on the earth. You got what you asked for. So it's when you're being genied, it's when a guy or girl, here's what you're asking for, and then changes it ever so slightly to be mostly in their favor and convenient. Yeah, you got you got McDonald's running from the sky. Like, yes. Like Shazam. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I would like the most delicious meal in the world. Here's your McDonald's. And you go, well, I, I didn't exactly. Because girls do this all the time. They'll go, yeah, uh, I'd love to meet. And, you know, I don't want to date unless I meet you in person. Then they go, well, I'm outside right now. And you go, well, this isn't like the date. I, I meant a date. And then you go to the court of public opinion. You go, she asked to see me in person. This is what you asked for. This girl's getting genied. Because she's saying, this guy's, you know, texting her out of the blue. Hey, I, you know, I've been here. I've been liking your Instagram posts. Um, I'd like to take it to the next level and I'm only doing that because I'm in town. So what should she do? The ball is mostly in my court. <clears throat> exactly. I'm dribbling over and you can shoot on my time. So what should she do? Uh, you should be honest with yourself. That's what I'm asking you to do. This could be fun. I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. If you can have fun, go on a date with him and realize this is probably going to be a one night thing where you're going to have fun with a guy and he's going to take you out, make you feel special. And then the next day he's going to text a lot less than he texted the day before. That's really what you can expect. Sorry. But don't go into this thinking with the two hours away thing because two hours away is short before you have come. Two hours away is nothing before you have ejaculated. Two hours away is 8,000 miles, 800,000 miles. Two hours away might be, I don't know. (laughs) 
Two hours away becomes... We don't have the bullet train here. Yeah, before you come, two hours away is, it's only two hours, I'll be there, yeah. can't wait. After you come, it's like, you know, I'd love to be with you, but you live two hours away. That's the difference, and that's what you're going to deal with. Podcast at gmail.com. Podcast at gmail.com. We're here with Classic Shelb. Go follow Classic Shelb. He's doing some great stuff. At Classic Shelb on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. Um, we got, how much time we got left? Where, where are we at right now? We got, we're about 40 minutes. Love it. Before we get to this next email, we're sponsored people. Are you craving a partner? The kind who answers your beck and call, the one you can call to bring you sushi at 1130, red wine at midnight, and breakfast burrito at 8 a.m.? You can stop swiping. Postmates is here, and they're saying, hey, girl, I love Postmates. Here's what I love about Postmates. I travel a lot, and I get done with work at a late hour. I can pull up Postmates, and I can go, and Postmates tells me, here are the places that are open. It's not going to be a Google map situation where I'm like, you know, I get attached to a place in a menu and then they're like, eh, we're close. And then the phone rings for six hours. Postmates takes all of that indecision out of your life. Postmates goes, here are the three places that are open. Here are the three places that are nearby. Also, it has infatuation approved restaurants. So right there on the app without having to like Google search best restaurants and dumb fuck PA, you can go, I know I'm going to get the best places that are nearby. So Postmates has really, um, what Postmates has done with their app is they've cleaned up the whole process that you would have done anyways and made it easy and quick. So if you don't have Postmates already, I'm going to give you some free money. Yeah. Um, limited. Done. It's in for a limited time. So you got to do it now. Postmates is giving my listeners one hundred dollars. Did you, wait? What hit that? Hit that rewind button. One hundred dollars. Yeah, you heard me correctly. A free delivery credit for your first seven days. That's free money, people. I I don't know. Some of your best friends have never given you a hundred dollars. So remember that your boy Papa JT just gave you a hundred. Don't mind if I do. That's right. To start your free deliveries, download the app right now. Use code JTRAIN, JTRAIN, JTRAIN. That's JTRAIN for a $100 of free delivery credit for your first seven days when you download the Postmates app. Get anything you need, anytime you need it. Download Postmates and save with coupon code JTRAIN, JTRAIN, JTRAIN. Get what you want out of life. Postmates, go get it. That's all our sponsors. They're all in the description of the podcast, okay? Is canceling dates canceled? J Train, I begin listening to your U Up podcast during my long commute over the summer. I've since been weekly listener of that and J Train. I've also spent many Monday nights laughing uncontrollably at your Bachelor Instagram and story. Hey, listen, The Bachelor is happening. Um, I want to thank you guys for all the support on The Bachelor stuff. It's blown up, it's considerably large. People can't get enough of it. I can't get enough. Thank of it. you. People really enjoy it. Um, and I want to tell you how much I appreciate you guys doing exactly what I asked, touching it, tagging people, sharing it. And listen, I'm not, oh, I'll be a little cocky for a second. You're sharing because it's funny. But that's how the whole economy of online stuff works. I'm not asking you to pay for you to watch the Instagram. I'm actually not even making my Instagram private. If you noticed, a lot of these big meme accounts go private because they got sick and tired of people sharing their shit and not following. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to trust the listeners and their friends enough to go, we're going to keep it public, watch it, and I trust myself to be funny enough to get you to want to follow. I, All, I don't think you, and how could anybody not after they see it? I, I, I agree. I, I'm with you. Um, also, um, should we say it now? It, I, I'm in Salt Lake City tonight. Yeah. If you're listening now and you're in Salt Lake City and you haven't bought a ticket, you should buy one. You should bring a friend. You should come out. Uh, I got a lot of new material. I'd say it's 90% new from the album. Get that's, in that. That's pretty You've good. heard the album. You want to hear more. I say 90% because some of the jokes are so new that I want to make sure that people are laughing before I get to the new part. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I hear you. I'm trying to work on it. Fuck it. Stand-up's tough work. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's not gonna lie. It's uh, I've been failing a lot. 
But I won't fail in Salt Lake. So Salt Lake, if you're out there, also Buffalo, Buffalo, Buffalo next week. JaredFree.com, JaredFree.com. Um, I previously matched with a guy on Bumble who I've met, talked to once at a party roughly four to five months ago. He's also friends with some of my guy friends. So I decided to slide in uh, on Bumble and it worked. After a day of messaging on the app, we moved to texting. We started planning a hangout and I was getting a vibe that he maybe only wanted to hook up. For background, I'm 22 and he's 23. I just graduated from college and work full-time now and he just got out of the military and also works full-time. I'm looking for something more serious now. As many of my friends are in serious relationships and I've had fun throughout my college. Um, And I'm... And if I really wanted to just hook up with someone, I have a roster already, you know? I get it. Why go through all this messaging on stuff on Bumble for that? Well, I disagree with that perspective. You can go on Bumble for a fun time. Mm -hmm. It's a great way to meet new people. That's why you're on there, to meet new people. I think if you... I, I think she's already ahead of herself. When you go on Bumble going, well, the only people I'll talk to is the people that I... That's fine, but if you're getting the vibe and the conversation that they only want to hug up, you're not going to change that. It's not going to be different. Mm -hmm. Anyways, he reassured me uh, a hookup is not what he was wanting. He doesn't know. I, no one can assure you that. He Here's what I can tell you. He wants to hook up with you until he doesn't want it. You, that's what you're going to say. You have to say yeah. that to get in front of them. I used to sell life insurance. When you cold call, you go, hi, I'm Jared Freed calling from blankety blank. Uh, I'd love to come to your, I'm going to be in your office anyways. That's what you would say. I'll be in your office next Tuesday talking about the products and services that I offer. Would you like to set up 15 minutes to talk? And they would go, I'm not looking to buy. And you go, I'm not looking to sell. That's what you'd say. <laughs> I'm not looking to, I don't, I don't come there assuming that. I just assume that we will be there, that I could be someone you would call on for when you're looking to buy. So that's kind of what he's doing. When you ask someone, when you say to someone, I'm not looking to hook up, a guy or a person who does want to hook up, they would be lying to say, everyone is looking to hook up that meets you. That's the only reason you matched on Bumble. Yeah, yeah this person is hot. They didn't look at you and go, she looks like a college graduate. <laughs> she was. He goes, that, those apps are made for you're hot, I'm hot, let's, let's, uh, I want this. Not to say you have to, not to say that you wouldn't go on a fine date with someone and, and meet them and figure it out, but I'm saying when you ask someone, are you here looking for hookups, the answer, the true answer is yes, yes I am. For maybe not today, but whenever you're ready. Mm -hmm. That's what I would do when I would sell life insurance. Do dates. I just need to get, I just need to get in your phone. So that when the time comes that you're looking to drop off the cum, mm -hmm. I'm there to receive. <laughs> That's, I mean, unfortunately, I went, too, uh, I went way too hard with my friends the night before and was a bit hung over the day of our date. Also with other things to get done that day and a long drive back to where I live and work in the morning. I explained my day wasn't going as planned and asked if we could reschedule for the next week and even showed effort that I'd be willing to make the trip back to him since it's my fault we couldn't hang out about a two-hour drive in my defense as I mentioned earlier that he sucks at texting dinner was his idea but I had to decide when and where because he just said he doesn't care so I honestly felt less bad about canceling since he wasn't showing as much enthusiasm of not course a, he isn't not a good move yeah you're two hours away nobody wants some dates no guy is enthusiastic to date someone who lives two hours away. Nobody. Because what happens when you live two hours away, you're my responsibility whether it goes good or bad. I mean, I would. if someone lived in New Jersey, that's a little far. That's a lot far. Um, so I sent what I thought would be a good text to show that I felt bad about missing the date. Second screenshot below. He read in the morning and has left me on red since. Uh, that was Sunday night, and it's now 2 p.m. on Tuesday. Did I completely blow with him because I canceled on the date? I fully regret it now, but unfortunately, wasn't feeling on my A game the, that day, and it's been a few months since I've been on went on a first date, so I was also nervous. Should I continue making an effort when I don't know for sure if we'll even like each other? And the texting isn't very exciting so far anyways. I remember really vibing with him the first time I met him at the party, so I just don't know what to do next or what he's thinking. He's a really hard person to read over text. Okay, so the first text she sent, here's the first text where he says, she says you just want to make sure. that. Okay, so his text on Sunday, June 5th, 
well, if I come down there, that's what the, that's what there. What's the plan? And he did a smirky face with the teeth clenched face. Hey, that ooh. means he wants to hook up. Well, I guess that depends on what your intentions are with this. And he writes, I don't know. Ha ha. You got to show me what your intentions are. Then she writes, okay, I can do that. Winky face. Uh, I just want to make sure your intentions aren't just a hookup. Nothing wrong with that, LOL, but I kind of passed that phase if that makes sense at all. And then he writes, oh, of course, definitely not just that. <laughs> Very convincing. <laughs> she writes, okay, just checking in, LOL, you never know. Um. So then he writes, this is the other text. I don't, I mean, I don't want, don't, I don't want you to have to drive all the way here just to hang out for a bit, LOL. See, that's him doing what I would say. That's the excuse. She writes, I mean, I probably do other things while I'm in town too. Upside down smiley. Maybe go see my nieces and nephew. Unless you decide to come to Columbus. Do you live with your parents? Yeah, until my buddy comes home next month, we're renting a house. Oh, cool. Looking for a place around Blankington? Uh, I think so. Kind of closer to Blankington. Ah, nice. That'd be cool. You're probably sleeping already, but sorry again for missing tonight. I promise I'll make it up to you. Have a good day tomorrow. Yeah, this isn't going to happen. He ain't He ain't as no. interested as you are. No. And you're interested in winning the situation rather than going out with someone that will be fun. You're too, I, and I, I get why she's like, well, I'm looking for a relationship and I just met this guy and we vibe well in person. Those are all fine and great things, but you're pushing to make something happen that isn't going to happen. Walk away. Two hours away. Whenever you say, I don't want you making the trip for just me, that's you going, hey, you're not my responsibility. I don't care to make you my responsibility. J train podcast at gmail.com. Let's do a couple more. Let's see if we can, what we can get through in the last couple minutes here. One more email. I've been dating this guy for three months and things are going great. Uh, we have so much fun together. The sex is great and he has a solid career, but I recently noticed something that I can't run. See, he has a lot of plaque buildup around his teeth. Gums are inflamed food caught in there. Chunky plaque. The oh, works. Hell no. That's an unseeable thing. I would rather seeing the shit come out of someone's ass than placky teeth. That's a f people have a shit fetish. No one has a dirty mouth fetish. <laughs> that is not someone's foot. Mm -hmm. That is... Look, we used to, there's a person for every foot, asterisk, not the mouth. Though. Not, not the, the placky dirty teeth. Mouth. Mm -hmm. That's a gross one, and I'm with her. She, I mean, chunky plaque is the grossest thing I've ever read in my entire life. The works. His breath doesn't smell because he religiously brushes and uses mouthwash, but it looks like he hasn't flossed in years, and it really grosses me out. Oh, the imagery in my mind, and I'm sure the listeners have this too, is gross. I haven't liked this someone this much in forever, and I know it's not the biggest deal in the world. How do I ask him to step up his floss game without offending him? He can be sensitive sometimes, and I don't want him. To, I don't want him to think I'm judging him. You are. <clears throat> this is a tough one because there is nothing more debilitating as I have always thought this. If someone, if you're arguing with someone, like if someone like approached you aggressively and was like, fuck, like, like talk to me, just be like, fuck you, whatever. Like, like Shelby, what the fuck? Hey, fuck you. That, yo, your breath stinks. Like, if I said your breath stinks, game over. You drop, finish him, annihilation. Yeah. What the fuck, you fucking piece of shit? Does your breath smell? That's all you have to say because it goes out of right field. I do it in, um, I do it actually when I host at the mm -hmm. Comedy Cellar, and it, and it works because it puts you in a position of power. I don't do the breath smell thing, but sometimes there'll be someone up front that is annoying and talks so fucking loud. And they'll, and I'm, I mean, I'm the king of loud. I'm, yeah. the, I'm the fucking lord of loud. But at a comedy show, sometimes audience members come in too hot. And it's like, you need to calm them down so that they don't 
get in the way of the show. Yeah. When someone comes in and they're like responding to every joke and like in a, like talking back to every joke and telling you, oh, yeah, 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 that's funny. It's distracting and hurtful to the show. So sometimes when I'm on stage, I'll be like, hey, everybody, welcome to the show. And then I'll see someone that's like that and I'll go, where are you from? And they always do the same thing. They'll be like, they'll be like, um, Springfield, Massachusetts. And I'll go, and I'll stop myself and go, do you have a microphone? You're the loudest person I've ever met. <laughs> and the crowd always laughs because it's basically, it's cutting them at the knees going, you need to shut the fuck up. Like, what's wrong with you? So when you say to someone, if you were in an argument with someone, the same thing would apply where they're like, you're being a piece of shit. You're a selfish piece of garbage asshole. And you go, yo, your breath stinks. They would crumble. Like, oh, uh, the thing we weren't, the thing we were fighting about, not even important to me. This, yeah, this fight, this, your breath is so much worse than me worrying about my life or like the fight. So that's how I know this is a difficult situation because if she ever said to him, you got plaque in your teeth, he would crumble into a ball and fucking lose it. And if he's sensitive already, if she knows that, how would you go about telling him? Because she's got, she can't break up with him because of the plaque, because this is fixable. Shelby? Yeah, it's, I mean, get him a, get the, get on that quip, maybe. <laughs> yeah, get the quip. Maybe that's a gift for him. Mm hmm. And, Get them the gift because now they have new floss. You can use the promo code JTrain that's there. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. This is tough because it's not like because he she said, "Oh, the breast doesn't stink," so she can't. It's not like she can go like you know. Oh, hey, he, you might need some gum or some so make him like push him into that direction. She says, and and he does religiously brush his teeth. But this is kind of like when I do the Quip ad, and this isn't an ad for Quip. Yeah. I always talk about how you get past 10 years old and then everyone just assumes you know what you're doing. You're never allowed to ask how to brush your teeth again. You're never allowed to be like, am I flossing right? You have to go to the dentist once a year and kind of feel ashamed of yourself because you're bleeding. They're going, you should floss. And then they kind of try, like I had a dentist try and teach me once. I get it. I'm with them. And I would assume, especially at a certain age, and I, I know this is kind of like some people might scoff at this, men don't go to the doctor. And don't go to the dentist. Like, I'm sure there's someone listening. And I'm sure there might be a dude who hasn't been to the dentist in, you know, three years. Yeah, you might be. Yeah. It's like. I mean, yeah. I've been that guy. You don't want to spend the money on it. You don't have the money. Yeah, you don't have dental insurance. You don't have dental insurance. Yeah. I go now, you know, every six months. Mm -hmm. Because it's important to me. It's important for you. It's important for the gal or the guy. This is right. So maybe the answer is a gift certificate to a dentist. You pay for the cleaning. I don't know. This is tough. There's no way to not offend him. I'm trying to think of all the ways. Because she's really like kind of put not herself in a corner, but I mean, you got to. Here's what I would do. Here's what you do. You're going to judge him, but only a little bit. Next time you sleep over, you go, you go do your bedtime routine after he does his. So he goes and brushes, he goes, gets it done. And then you go in after, and then you go, did you not floss? Are you not a flosser? That's the way you get into it. Yeah. Or even, or even like, oh, oh, you probably don't have any with you. Oh yeah. Here I have some. Like, yeah, if you're like, wait, because I didn't see, are you like, I think making it like light like that where you go, are you not a flosser? Like, how do you not floss your teeth? That's like a normal way to ask that is like, I noticed. And then he'll go, uh, no, I've lost. And you go, no, you don't. You can make fun of it. What are you, eight? And now it's a little bit more playful because it's in the context of sleeping at his house. It's in the context of like the bathroom talk. You notice because you didn't see in the garbage. It's not in the toilet. The old floss. Or even you can... Even if you really don't want to hurt his feelings, put it on yourself. Like, oh my god, I didn't leave floss out. You probably don't think I have. Here, we have some. I have some right here. Exactly. Yeah. Make it like we both don't. Oh fuck. I or you go in his bathroom. You go. Do you have any floss? And when he doesn't have it, you go. Wait a minute. Are we both not flossing here? <laughs> and then you go. I'll buy some. 
And you go buy a bunch and then you do it together. Spearman or Wintergreen. Yeah. Boom. J Train Podcast at Gmail.com. J Train Podcast at Gmail.com. Let's do some news. I don't uh, mean to pry here, mm. but in your ye- in many years on Earth, have you ever had a threesome? Um, or known anybody? I've known people who've mm-hmm. had threesomes. Well, have you been in a threesome? I have not. Let's okay. say if you had to have one. If I Where, had if to have, have one. if you got to if, have, you know. if the world made me, if 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 a if if heaven forbid, I'm forced into a threesome situation to save my family and friends. Mm-hmm. Okay. Where would you like that to happen? The location, Ooh, hotel. It would have. I would want to be at a high end, really nice hotel with a great bathroom, Four Seasons. That's where, and then, because you could open up that mini fridge, pull out all the bottles of vodka and alcohol, really have a party, and it's like you guys can all go throughout the night. People can have their privacy in a nice bathroom, in the shower, in the sheets. It's comfortable. Four Seasons Hotel, that's where I'm doing it. So you wouldn't have the... If I'm forced into Mm -hmm. the Mm -hmm. unthinkable situation of 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 a threesome. So you would not... Have the threesome at a courthouse. Um, on the list, that's number three. I, I, mm-hmm. it's it's not far down the list, but probably not. How? I mean, the game to pull that off. How did that happen? Well, Don Gentry, D A W N. This is a woman. Mm-hmm. A f- Kentucky family court judge. Kentucky makes the most sense as a place where this would happen. Has been suspended without pay. Wait, she's the judge. The family court judge. Okay. Suspended without pay after she was accused of misconduct, including an allegation that she had a threesome in the courthouse. With who? She. This is the hottest (laughs) thing ever. This is literally a porno. Do you think with porn being so much more accessible and easily there that we're now like that that everyone's just like that these porn scenarios happen more because it's almost like well i saw it there and i've seen this this is uh, this has been put into my mind yeah like this is a dream you never would have had like the, the person who was a judge never even thought of and then they saw like a porn where the judge is like court is adjourned and then they pull out their dick and you're like hey not so crazy and I would get that would kind of get anybody in trouble. She's accused of coercing her court staff to work on her judicial election campaign. That should be, you know, I, I that to me is worse than the threesome. Mm-hmm. To me, the threesome, if it's consensual, what's the problem here? The problem is the janitor's got to clean up all the tissues. Yeah. But when it comes to making your staff work on a campaign for your re-election. They're not getting paid. They're not consenting. You know, they have to consent. They're in a forced consent situation where, I mean, I guess if it's as the judge, you could force someone into a threesome by being like, hey, I'll be a little bit more lenient. She's retaliated against employees who failed to support her campaign. Yeah, that's a problem. Hired a man, is alleged, uh, who she already had a sexual relationship with. Mm -hmm. She hired her lover, a former pastor, Okay, and allowed him to play guitar and sing in the office. Well, the the biggest problem is a pastor that plays guitar. Not good. If you are a religious leader who plays guitar, it is a tough watch, I gotta say. Not not, a fan. We're not around a campfire here. Yeah, come on. I once went to, like... A cousin's bat mitzvah, and the guitar rabbi came out, and my family and I sat in the third row, and made fun of this rabbi the rest of the event. We we discussed his SoundCloud page, <laughs> and where can you find it? Every time he finished a song, I would go, and you can find me on iTunes by searching uh, "rock and rabbi." You know, like I, it's just nothing more cliche and funny to me. Awful. 
Gentry, her male lover, and a third employee, a woman, mm. also are alleged to have engaged in sexual activity in the courthouse. Yeah, it's funny to me that the that's the least problematic thing to me. Like, the more of the problem is the nepotism of hiring your lover, the making people work for you. Like, you're an unbearable boss. If If I had a boss that would, like, I found out they fucked in the, you know, they had a threesome in the room next to me. I go, good for everyone involved. I hope everyone was on board. She it, seems to be pretty brazen about this. What else she might she be doing? Yeah, well, yeah, this is, well, I think one is used against you. Be, like, people use the threesome thing against you because they need the public opinion to be on their side to get you for making you work for their campaign. So you're building a case. It's, it's funny the way the world works. Like, these people are unfairly having to work for a campaign. And they're like, okay, how do we get people to automatically agree with us? Mm. And they go, plus she fucks in, she had a threesome in the, in the, in her, in the, in the judge's chambers. <laughs> and it's like, then you go, all right, fire her. If you go, Hey, I'm pretty sure like one, it's, it's really the, the plight of the worker, man is that it's really tough to get someone fired. Oh, yeah. so, so you have to build a case. And the case should just be, hey, I'm paid to work at the security for the... Hey, I'm paid to work security for the court. But the other day I was licking envelopes to, to, for mailers. And at that point, the person should be fired. The judge, she should be fired. But in most cases, that's not enough. They'd go slap on the wrist. The judge would stick around. The security guard's life would be fucking miserable because they ratted them out. And so the security guard's like, oh, plus I got the threesome fucking, you know, Trump card. So they have to throw that in. So not only do I have to, like, that's this is the. If she could do the wrongful termination, you got to be eat. Exactly. Please build a case. Yeah. So the, it's like this is so this story only the only reason we're reading about it is because of the threesome. But it's interesting to me that the threesome isn't even the worst crime. Yeah. The committee, I like this. She's this, she's also accused of approving false or inaccurate timesheets and of course allowing, she is. allowing staff to store and consume alcoholic beverages in court offices and the courthouse. Gentry. Yeah, they were cool with that until they had to lick the envelopes for her fucking vote for me campaign. Gentry denies falsifying the timesheets and she had said through a lawyer in a court response that she had been unaware that staffers were drinking, which at that point I'd be like, it's like, we're, we're kind of focused on the threesome. Yeah. We're not, oh, the time. Yeah, sheets. we don't care about the Labatt blues you guys had in the fucking, you know, in, in your office after workout. Yeah, this, this is this is all so that the people that are bringing the case make sure she's fired. This is a put, this is a chop off the head situation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a Jason Voorhees. Did you kill him? Ah, uh, well, I shot him in the arm. No, 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 no. Chop off the fucking head. <laughs> Shelby, thank you for bringing the news. Thanks for having me. At Classic Shelb on Twitter and Instagram and Snapchat. I'm Jared Freed. We're here every Tuesday and Friday. Very excited to be here at the Virtual Comedy Network. Um, very excited for the future of this podcast. Thank you for going through kind of the, the changes with us. We hope that it really didn't affect you too much i'm gonna be in i'm in salt lake city tonight and tomorrow come on out come on out come on out and i'll be in uh buffalo next week uh check out the bachelor and uh j train podcast at gmail.com we'll be back next episode boom